uh, what do you say to someone who says, and it's quite common, I hate maths? That means that you didn't learn it in the right way. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's interesting that it's okay to, to, in society to say that because math is so fundamental and yet people can be totally proud in saying, oh, I always hated mathematics. Right. Can you imagine people saying, I always hated to learn to read? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> people don't say that, right? <laughs> But somehow with math, you know, I think, that, <laughs> I think that needs to change. You know, math is just as fundamental as reading. You, know, you shouldn't hate it. You should find the right way to learn it. Just like yeah. it's just you wouldn't be proud of being illiterate. In the same way, you shouldn't be proud of <laughs> not knowing maths or hating maths. That's my feeling. <laughs> What's the one thing you want to do in your life from now on? One big thing. Well, the last few months, uh, ever since I got this Fields Mill in August, <laughs> uh, life has kind of changed. <laughs> Uh, and I've realized that I suddenly have the platform to try and change education. And so that's, I think, become suddenly my, one of my main passions is to change the way mathematics is taught, help make that, uh, that curriculum shift to make mathematics fun that's and exciting again. Actually. Isn't that wonderful? I, don't know. I think it's so badly needed, really. So like you're saying that uh, many people here and watching could become great mathematicians like you, or maybe not as good, but uh, could be. Yeah, absolutely. If they're taught properly, or given the right stimuli, etc. It's not like you have to be superhuman to do that. Right, right. And uh, taking the initiatives on your own. If you're passionate about something, if it's not available in your school the way you want it, you do it on your own. You find the right book that, you know, that, that teaches it in the way that you like. Mm -hmm. and just explore and, and, and develop the right way to learn for yourself because there isn't any one way that works on everybody. You have to sort of discover that for yourself. Figure out what you're most passionate about and then figure out the path that you want to take uh, that, that you'll enjoy the most and then work hard at it and, and then you'll, you'll right, do great. Right. That's great. Just like we mathematicians always view mathematics as the most basic of the sciences, the most central of the sciences in the same way number theory is the most basic uh, of the subjects in mathematics. So what, what is, is number theory? Number theory is, by definition, is the study of whole numbers. So the numbers that we, that we count with, one, two, three, four, and so on. Of course, we also include zero, and minus one, and minus two, and <laughs> minus three, and so on. And those numbers together are called the whole numbers. And number theory is the study of whole numbers, of properties of the whole numbers, of patterns in the whole numbers. Uh, number theorists love to study special sequences of whole numbers, like the odd numbers or the square numbers, uh, and of course the prime numbers, which are probably mm. the most important sequence for, for number theorists. The reason being that every whole number can uniquely be expressed by multiplying together prime numbers. So prime numbers are like the atoms uh, of the number theory world. People who can recall numbers and facts with amazing accuracy. What's, where's the line? Manjul, do you want to take that? Yeah, well... Yeah, often math savants are confused with math geniuses, and mathematicians don't often like to, to think of math savants as mathematicians, because mathematicians really do something different. Math savants have uh, an amazing recall, a photographic memory sometimes. They can do huge computations in their head, given a computation. But mathematics is something that's way beyond computation. For example, computation can allow you to check whether a certain solution to an equation is true, but it doesn't tell you how to prove that, that you have found every solution. So when you're in mathematics, you want to know that, when Stephen was talking about equations before, what mathematicians try to do is prove that you found every solution, mm -hmm. or prove that that equation is always true no matter what you put in it. And no matter how big a number you put in it, you have to check infinitely many things. Mm. And so no matter how good a computer you have, including a, hu a human computer, a human savant, they can't just check 10, 20, million, mm -hmm. billion cases and know that that's always going to be true. You need a mathematician to have a creative argument to explain why this will continue to hold true forever. There's been a lot of debate about that, about whether he should have been, just been allowed to run and, and just write one more amazing thing after another, and he could leave that with us as he has, and, and we can try to understand it for the next several centuries. Or <laughs> we could yeah. slow him down by a factor of 100 and ask him to explain each step that he was going through. Uh, and as a result, we end up with 100th less work. <laughs> uh, and there's been a, there's been a, there's been a long, uh, long debate about that, about which one should have been right. But you know, he was proving you know, 100 theorems a day, finding 100 new formulas a day. Should we have changed that to just doing, being one or two so that he conforms to the way that we, uh, we need mm. to understand 
things today. Can you uh, give us a minute on partitions or uh, sure. 30 seconds? Yeah, yeah. partitions is one of the, the most uh, elementary things that, uh, that he did in the sense that you can explain it to anybody what his. He was studying how many ways can you take a number and divide it up into pieces. So, for example, if you want to break up four into pieces, you could do one plus one plus one plus one, or you could do two plus one plus one, or you could do three plus one, or you could just leave it as four. And so how many total ways can you break up four? Uh, that's, that's a question. How many ways can you break up a million? A billion. How fast does that grow, uh, that function, where you're asking, uh, so P of n is the number of ways that you can break up n. So uh, how many ways can you break up a million, a billion? And the way that this function was growing, uh, people had studied it for years and just couldn't see any, pa you know, what, what is the rate of growth that this, mm. is, this is taking? And one of the things that Ramanujan writes to Hardy, he gives an exact <laughs> formula for how it's growing. Yeah. <laughs> that had never been seen before. And it completely stuns Hardy. And for, for Hardy, this was the point at which he said, okay, I have to, I have to stop you. you. We have to explain this. Yes. Because <laughs> this has been such an old problem. Everyone thought it was unsolvable. And here he is. He just yeah. gave the answer. How did you come up with that answer? I don't know. <laughs> now McGinty wrote it on my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the point where he said, no, you have, yeah. to, you have to explain this. He does say, at one point in the movie, you have him saying, um, uh, I, 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 someone say, one of the questions is, how do you do this? He says, I don't know, it's all in my mind. I just right, imagine right. it all. So he's, it's all happened, it's an interior monologue. It's an interior thing. Him. But in this case, Hardy really pushed it. Yes. And this led to their amazing collaboration uh, in which they introduced a technique of proof called the circle method, mm -hmm. which is now the fundamental tool in the, in the field of mathematics called analytic number theory. It's just completely transformed. So, so that's a case where his pushing Ramanujan to actually give the proof led to one of the most amazing proof techniques in the subject that has ever been introduced. Uh, Manjul, let me, let me um, uh, ask you to talk to us about legacy. What of, um, of, uh, of Ramanujan's uh, formulas, proofs that, that, that he came up with in the um, last century, where is it leading us today and how is it shaping our future? Yeah, well, we're still trying to understand a lot of it. Uh, but maybe to give you just one example, the, the letter that he wrote on his deathbed uh, to Hardy uh, was this, he was, he was on his deathbed, he was extremely sick, and yet he was still producing these, these ridiculous formulas and, and <laughs> send, sending, them, uh, sending them to Hardy. And we still, we still have that letter today. And in that letter, you know, he's trying to get a lot of his ideas out because he knows maybe he doesn't have that much time. And so in this letter, he writes some incredible formulas and he describes one of the very important functions in mathematics are called theta functions. And in that letter, he introduces a concept he says he calls mock theta functions, which have properties like these most important theta functions. Uh, and, and he predicts they will be just as important in mathematics as these theta functions that, mm -hmm. that had been passed on for, for decades and, and been used in, in every application imaginable. And people looked at this for well, maybe, you know, half a century, uh, and they're like, well, it's clearly not as important as regular theta <laughs> functions. That we, we don't even know what this means. What is he talking about? And, and just, you know, it took 80 years, and there was a PhD thesis of someone named uh, Zweigers in Germany, and he got to the bottom of what, what Ramanujan meant by this, and he gave a, an explanation of where Ramanujan uh, uh, was going with this, and he wrote his PhD thesis uh, about this 80 years after, uh, you know, after uh, this, this this enigmatic letter that Ramanujan wrote. And, and now it's blossomed into a whole, uh, a whole field uh, called mock modular forms. And now these mock modular forms are, being, are coming up everywhere in physics. And there were some questions about black holes and string theory that had been open for so long. And somebody's now, we've now realized that exactly those formulas that Ramanujan wrote in, in, this, in this deathbed letter are what we need to understand so that problem. So string theory, black, black holes, holes. And it's all, this is cutting edge, this is just in the last year that this has happened. <laughs>